The first mate told me we're going to be looking for an Earth Pulse thingy, right? The ship's ready to leave whenever. Do you want to depart now? Uh, I understand why the Abbey turned this island into a prison. The waters here are filled with rapid sea currents. Make a single wrong turn of the rudder, and your ship will be capsized just like that. Not to mention the fog and all the storms that pass by. It must be nearly impossible to escape. Aye. To get on and off this island, you'd need a vast store of nautical knowledge and a skilled hand. Thanks to your curse, Eisen, we've gotten good enough to handle rough seas like this. The storm that kicked up when we made our escape was huge, and all we had were three novice sailors. Thinking back on it, we had some seriously good luck. The first mate told me the ship's ready. It's here! This is the Earth Pulse Point! Nothing but open water as far as the eye can see. Is your Earth Pulse Point down below? Uh, hmm. Most of this world is covered by ocean. So of course there'd be a lot of Earth Pulse points in the deep sea. But surely even the Abbey would have a hard time containing Aetherian underwater, right? Looks like this one's a bust then. Sorry, everyone. Hold on. We've seen a bug Therian. You don't think there could be fish as well? You may have a point. I think I have just a solution for this. You do? This. What? what? Don't give me that look. I'll have you know this is Fujibayashi's rod. This baby's nine feet long, made from a single piece of the finest bamboo aged five years, with a slow 60-40 action that almost feels alive when it bends. Its exquisitely wrapped handle feels like an extension of your own arm. And just look at that elegant black lacquer finish. It's as perfect a fishing rod as there can be. I'm sure it's a lovely fishing pole, but... Fishing? Are you sure? This is Aetherian we're talking about. All the more reason. Remember who you travel with. Uh, okay? Alright, if no one else will, I'm going to veto this fishing idea. Aw, oh, come on, let's give it a shot. Besides, I'm hungry. Even if all we catch is fish, at least we'll have dinner. Mm, I'd love to have me some koi or sockeye salmon. Don't encourage them. How do you attach the hook to the line? Like... this? <laughs> you don't go fishing much, do you? It's just been a while. I used to go fishing with my brother sometimes. This is my first time. Then we can try it together. I'll teach you how it's done. I didn't know you could fish, Eleanor. Yeah, when I was little, old man Tenny taught me. He was from my village. I've caught at least a hundred tree at loaches over the years. Wow, that's a lot of fish. Those two really get along. If I didn't know better, I think she's his sister, not his vessel. Eleanor certainly got Lafayette's number. Better watch out, Velvet, or she'll steal him away. Lafayette, let's get the line set up properly. First, you take it and thread it through the hook, like so. That looks hard. Uh, hey. Once you get the hang of it, you'll be able to do it with your eyes shut. Okay, I'll give it a shot. Luffy! Huh? You mean me? Oh, um, I was just... Be careful there. Wouldn't want you falling into the water or anything. I'm not a little kid, you know. It's just that Luffy fell in once. A long time ago. Lofi? You mean your younger brother? That's right. You reminded me of him is all. If you say so. Is that all you wanted to say to me? Yeah, that's it. Okay then. I'm going back to fishing with Eleanor. Mm -mm. 
People aren't as easily swapped in and out as fish hooks, are they? Is that supposed to mean something? Oh, Velvet, uh, you gotta get it a lot tighter than that. Here, let me take a look at it. Huh? Oh, uh... All right. Old man Tenny sounds like he was a real goofball. Definitely. He used to say the weirdest things while we'd be fishing just to make me laugh. Like what? Oh, it was all nonsense, but it was funny to me. The silly stuff like... Papero popero hippity poppity poo. <laughs> yeah, that's silly, all right. Those two look like they're having fun. Hey, Eisen, how about a competition? Let's see who can catch the biggest fish. Don't be ridiculous. Fishing is a solitary battle. It's about meditation and self-control. Ooh, aren't you the philosophical one all of a sudden? <sighs> but I suppose. I can't deny I really want to put this rod to the test. Yeah, I know that feeling. Whenever I find a good sword, there's nothing I want to do more than to swing it. Sure enough. There's just something about good equipment that gets the blood pumping. Yeah. Although, in my case, it's usually more like blood spurting. A bit too much blood either way, if you ask me. Listen, we're fishing no matter what. Wouldn't the competition be better for getting that blood of yours pumping? Fine. You're on. But we both know already how this is gonna end. <laughs> you can plan all the victory speeches you like, but fishing is like life. Doesn't always go the way you think it will. You ready? Let's do this! At what point did the Therian hunt turn into a contest? If you truly admired the fishies, you'd never dream of doing this to them. No matter how tasty the bait, it's a poor trade for a barbed hook in the lip and a cruel death in the unforgiving air. I don't admire fish. Fish exist to be caught and eaten, as far as I'm concerned. Can't argue there. Raw, boiled, or grilled with a little salt. You can't go wrong. <laughs> and if they're nothing but food to you, even their wretched squirms of agony can hold a kind of beauty. <laughs> hey, Velvet! I've got your rod all set up for you! This thing could even catch a whale if you wanted to. The rest is up to you. Now get out there and fish up a big one. A Therian, you mean. <sighs> Might as well give it a shot. It's not like anyone else remembers what we're here for. <gasps> Something's pulling the line! Stay calm. Fishing isn't about strength, it's about timing. Oh, okay. Got it. Here it comes. You ready? <laughs> Damn right I am. I'll fillet it before it can even land. If it's a Therian, don't you dare kill it. Now! Heave! Well, what do you know? Neither a fish nor a Therian. Well, shoot. Can't eat that. Oh. It looks like it fit you, though, Laffy said. Why don't you try it on? I concur. Maybe it'll bring out his unique personality. My unique personality, huh? See? What did I tell you? It looks great on you, Laffy said. You... you really think so? Yeah. Brings out your special charm, kiddo. Come on. Back to Therian fishing. Oh. Hey, you don't need to take it so seriously. I have to catch the Therian. Maybe then Velvet will see me for who I am. Ugh, not a bite. Oh, quit your grumbling. Who was it who said fishing doesn't always go how you think it will? <laughs> Spoken like a true heartless pirate. Oh, hey, I've got something. <sighs> Whoa, looks like I'm next. <laughs> Not a single decent catch. 
I think it's decent. Huh? Take half measures, do you, kid? Hmm? What's wrong, Luffy said? You look ridiculous. Take that off. Stop it! What do you know about me anyway? I I know that looks silly on you. All you know is your Luffy! Hey, Velvet! Something's pulling on your rod. Huh? Oh. It's a big one! Give it everything you've got! I know what I'm doing! It's... It's a big one, all right, but... A pot. Yay. But what's a pot doing out here? There's something inside it. Stop making those noises! Watch out! They're all into the sweep! And they're shouting, Must you play a ring! Must you? A complete victory! Phew! That was scary. Be more careful before you approach a suspicious object. You think Luffy would have stayed back? That has nothing to do with this! Hold on. There's something else inside. <laughs> now we gotta fight the shambling dead? A zombo pot! A bunch of dead guys. They're awfully, uh, lucky. Further support for the healthy octopus diet. This fight is over. An octopus army, a horde of undead. What the hell is this pot? Magnificent. To think I'd get to see one with my own eyes. Huh? Is there something special about this creepy old pot? <laughs> creepy, you say? That's why these things need to be left to the professionals. Listen and behold, this is none other than a water jug made by the potter Groon during King Clauden's reign. It was a legendary once in a millennium masterpiece, but it was lost in the Second Warring States period 200 years ago. Assertive yet not ostentatious, the piece draws you in with its stately curves and the subtle shimmer of its colors, which belie a hidden savagery. <sighs> Two lectures in one day? <sighs> yeah, he's talking gibberish, but that's men in general, I suppose. The lost glazing technique of the Orosaurin is so vibrant, it looks like it could start moving at any moment. Oh, and start moving it did. Look out! The pot's a demon! Whatever you guys do, make sure you don't smash it! So can I smash it? That's even worse! Stop arguing and fight already! Hurricane J! Wait! Hurricane! 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 Hurric
It's finally decided to behave itself. Wait, Velvet! Don't eat it! It's a pot. I'm not gonna eat it. <sighs> I guess there weren't any Therians to be found here after all. Yeah, if there'd have been any, you'd think Ol' Eisen's Reaper curse would have drawn him out. Oh, so that's why all we caught today were weird, useless things. Right. I forgot about the curse. So all this was Eisen's fault, huh? Funny how quickly you get used to it. Oh, my power didn't end up helping us out at all. Nope. Hmm. But I know you're not the type to give up after a little setback. Isn't that right, Fee? Huh? Fee? It's your nickname. Not a whole lot of thought put into it. But... You're you. You're Fee. Velvet. Fee. I like it. It has personality. Thanks. Of course, if you still feel like giving up. No! I'm gonna find us the next Earth Pulse Point. Oh, hey. There's something else inside the pot. This golden luster, it's... It's Oracalcum! I get it now. This must be where that ship sank all those years ago. The one Kurogane told us about. 
Hell yeah! Kurogane might actually be able to make me an Orichalcum sword. Nice find, Aizen. You too, Lafayette. It wasn't easy, but we didn't come away empty-handed. And just getting a chance to fish again was lots of fun. Yeah, I had a really good time too. Even I was entertained. Especially your little costume show, kiddo. The sun's going down soon. Let's head back to Titania. do they have in common? What are you up to? I'm compiling everything we know about Earth Pulse points, starting with what the ones in Ward Forest and Polymedes have in common. I'll compare those points with the ones that didn't have any Therians. Then, I'll factor in everything I currently know about the Abbey's deployments. Once that's done, I'll match all that information against what we know about the locations Lafayette was able to sense. When that's completed, we should be able to tell which locations are more likely to house a Therian. You're really going all out, aren't you? Must you sound so incredulous? If you're going to do something, then give it your all! There is no other way to live! R right I'm counting on you then. I'm not doing this for you. This is for me and for Lafayette. Do you even understand why that boy's trying so hard? Yeah, I do. Lafayette! I spy! I spy! Uh, I can't, Kamawana. I I've got stuff to- I spy with my little eye! Something that starts with V! <sighs> okay, I'll try. Uh, is it... Velvet? <laughs> no! No fair! How'd you do it so fast? <laughs> Wait, Kamawana, I'm sorry. You don't have to cry. <laughs> Poor V. Oh, hey, Velvet. You don't mind if I give Kurogane that orichalcum you fished up, do you? Doesn't matter to me. But do you really think he can make a weapon with that? I don't know. What does the expert think? Conventionally, no, it's impossible. But when has convention ever stopped a demon? I won't argue that. We're dealing with the hardest metal in existence. But I'm ready to cast aside all doubt to focus everything on forging my greatest creation. If anybody can do it, it's you. Good luck, Kurogane. Yeah, best of luck. If you can make Rokuro stronger, you'll be helping me out too. Have you been practicing your dev impression, Velvet? What? No. Now, now. A performer in Mogilu's menagerie has to be more diligent than that. What if we're stopped at a checkpoint and the guards ask you to perform a trick? If that happens, I'll show them my trick where I devour an entire witch faster than the blink of an eye. Oh, that would be a sight indeed. But seriously, if you ever want some magic tricks up your sleeve, let me know and I'll teach you some. Just 10,000 gold each. Hey. What do you say we track down another Therian? Sure. From what I can tell, the next closest Earth Pulse point is near the center of Midgand. Midgand, huh? The capital's not far from there. I wonder how things are now that Griffin's gone, though. Only one way to find out. Maybe so, but Aizen's not here, you know. You're right. I haven't seen him in a while. We should probably ask Benwick where he wandered off to. Yeah. Hmm? Uh, hold on. There's a letter here. On pretty cutesy stationery, too. Let's just have a quick look-see. As the cold turns bitter and the snow piles up on the mountains, 
I cannot help but think of you and hope you are in good cheer. As for myself, I am the same as ever, although I recently acquired a rare item that I shall be sending your... It's rude to read other people's letters, you know. Yeah, but how else are we supposed to find out whose it is? Does it say who the sender is? Uh... Uzfamewu Wexov. Who the hell is that? Probably someone on this island, if I had to guess. Hey! Anybody lose a letter? Do any of these folks look like the type to write a fancy letter? Point taken. It could be one of the pirates. Why don't we go to the docks and ask around? Fine, just don't forget our mission. No reply this time either? Eh, but she's doing okay. I can say that much. That's good to hear. I can rest easy then. How's about getting that pot wrapped? I has got this new sunflower print, huh? How's that sound? Hmm. Yeah, that one's cute enough. Let's go with that. Did... Did he just say cute? <clears throat> Help you with something? Someone dropped this letter. Do you have any idea who it might... You didn't read it, did you? Wait, it's yours? We didn't read it. Much. You really didn't read it? N no of course not. Put this letter in with the package. Who's got it? When you ship with the Turtles Express, rest assured your mail is in good hands. If you're done here, we're ready to head out. Our destination is Midgand. Yeah, I'm all set. Was he sending a gift to someone? And with a letter, too. Gotta be a lady friend, that's for sure. You think? Either way, that letter was really polite. And did you see that penmanship? Yeah, I didn't know old Reaps had it in him. I can hear you two, you know. Ah! <laughs> Yikes! Better watch what we say from now on. Yeah. I noticed you've come up with your little name for the kid. You sure are the sentimental type, aren't you? Oh? Calling him Fee doesn't cost me anything, and it's not like I gave it much thought. That may be the case, but no one else has taken even that token effort. And in doing so, I wonder if maybe you were trying to encourage him to be his own being. After all, one requires a name before he can consider his own identity. Having been given a name, he realizes he is his own entity, separate from others, and a certain formless essence comes to life inside him. And you're the one who set that process in motion for the kid. Whether you intended to or not, you changed him from a puppet into a living being. So what's your point? I've been with you since the start of this journey, haven't I? Wouldn't kill you to give me a nickname, would it? I've never really thought of us as being that close. And besides, you just forced your way into the group. Come now! I know you've got a bigger heart than that! Surely you have it in you to give a nickname to a dear friend! We're not dear friends. And even if we were, I'm not good at nicknames anyway. Please! I'm begging you! Okay then. Moggy. Oh, come on, that's so obvious! Can't you put some heart into it for your dear friend? Fine. Lou. Do I look like an old man to you? You're not even trying! Okay then. Witchy Mick Witcherton. Interesting. Well, if I had to rank it against 1,000 other nicknames, I'd probably put it at number 1,011. A nickname needs to have charm. It needs to leave a lasting impression. Sure then. Hattie. Now you're just saying what you see! Book skirt. That's not any better either! Ms. Creepy Eyes. That's just an insult! Look, no nicknames based on what you see, and especially no slandering! Lil Miss Witch who smiles around you but stabs you in the back when you're not looking. Hey, that's personal information! Look, I told you. I'm not good at coming up with nicknames. Forget it! I should have known this wouldn't work! Aizen, what happened to those octopuses? Dial and Kurogane took them to the kitchen. They said they were going to make dinner for Kamoana. They're going to feed demons to her? Atheria needs malevolence to survive. That's why they carried them off alive. 
What do they plan on making? Octopus ink pasta with takoyaki and fried octopus on the side, and Helavisian octopus carpaccio. Do they have a takoyaki pan here at the prison? Kurogane hammered one out with some iron, along with a large pot for the pasta. <laughs> Still looking like that? Takoyaki would hit the spot right about now, though. Octopus ink pasta, huh? Like squids, octopuses release ink as a defensive mechanism. But theirs is made of different stuff and is used in other ways. Squid ink is stickier and acts like a decoy. But octopus ink spreads out like a cloud of smoke. But squid ink has 30 times the savory flavor. So octopus ink isn't used in pasta all that often. Laffy told me the same thing. He said that's why octopus ink pasta isn't very good. Laffy said that? Yeah, so I ended up not making it for him. But I wonder... I guess it doesn't matter, since I can't taste it now. I'll taste it for you then. So make me some octopus ink pasta sometime, alright? Alright, and I'll be sure to make some that doesn't come from demons. Hey, who did Aizen send that letter and cooking pot to, anyway? I don't want to think about it. That walloping still stings. You've got to be curious, though, right? Maybe. It was serious stuff. Whoever it is must be important to him. A lover, maybe? Aizen's lover? A child wouldn't be happy with that cooking pot, and a man wouldn't want it wrapped up so pretty. A young woman with Aizen's tastes, then. He'd be bound to fall for a miraculous match like that, right? I don't know. I bet she's that girl with the yellow umbrella. You really have a thing for her, don't you? I, I do not. That's not what I mean. Then pray tell. What do you mean? Huh? Eavesdropping, Eleanor? How unseemingly rude of you. Besides, Lafayette is free to like whomever he chooses. You're one to talk about eavesdropping, Moggy Lou. Anyway... It's just that the sunflower design on the wrapping reminded me of her. Now that you mention it, but does it really matter? He has someone to write to in any case. True. I can't help but feel a bit envious. What a nice way of summing it up, Velvet. So you were eavesdropping too, then. Uh. Say, what do you think about Aizen? Oh, so that's the kind of guy you're into, hmm? Huh. Not what I'd expect, but... No! I just feel there's something different about him. The way he picks presents, the objects that catch his eye. Oh, is that all? Boring. No kidding. All men have some kind of particular interest, big or small. I suppose that's true, but he seems a bit... Shall we say, overly obsessive? Now that you mention it, he does have a tendency to ramble on about various topics. And it's not just the items he collects. There's more to it? Every weekend, he eats curry for dinner, and every time we go into port, he docks at the third bollard. Come to think of it, I heard the galley crew complaining that he always needs his pasta cooked exactly the right way. And when he needs a new outfit, he always goes to the same tailor and returns with identical clothes and boots. It all has to be exactly the same size and in exactly the same color. Turtle says he's very nitpicky. Sounds like he's not so much picky as he is a pain in the ass. But I do see a different side of him now. I thought pirates were all rough and filthy, but it seems they can be quite meticulous. Not much of a reassessment. Hey, Aizen? Is there, uh, anything we can do about the Prince's Hawk? Griffin, I mean. Every day, it goes out on these hunts or whatever, and brings back the weirdest stuff. It's making a real mess out of the deck. Hawks hunt. What's the big deal? Well, yeah. At first it was bringing back good stuff like seaweed and fish, things we could cook with. Sure, I was glad for a while. But then it started to escalate. Now we're talking 150 kilo amber cans and 350 kilo killer swordfish that it's catching. That's not a bad thing, is it? It just means more to eat. It is when they're being dropped from the sky onto the deck. Especially those killer swordfish and razor-sharp bills! What if somebody gets run through by one? Can't you just warn the prince that his bird needs to be more careful? Yeah, we could, but he looks so happy watching his hawk, I'd hate to spoil it for him. Yeah, the prince looks so happy whenever Griffin is flying free. He kept grinning and asking Grocky all nice-like if he wanted to fly some more. 
Grocky? That's what Kamawana kept calling Griffin. She says she came up with it by combining Griffin and Hawk. <sighs> this is probably the first time in the Prince's life that he's tasted any freedom. His whole life he's only done what duty dictated of him. Letting Griffin fly was his first free act. To the Prince, Grocky is an extension of who he is. So what are we going to do? Nothing, really. It's not like it really hurt anybody. But it's punctured some major holes on the deck! I'm sure even the Prince knows when to rein it in. Let him have a little fun. He deserves it. I don't know about all that. I'd say the Prince is letting his newfound freedom get the better of him. Hey, I was just up on deck and it looks like Griffin's caught an elephant tuna this time. An elephant tuna? That's the really big tuna that can swallow a killer whale whole, right? That almost sounds like a demon to me. Yep. Huge fish, gills like elephant ears. I saw it myself. From the looks of it, I wouldn't be surprised if it was a demon. It's crazy valuable. On a good day, it can fetch 20 million gold on the market. But there's something ominous about seeing it hovering in the air above the ship. 20 million gold? I take back everything I said. The Prince and Griffin can do whatever they want. Did she say above the ship? Oh, hell. Benwick, we need to stop Prince Percival. Aye, aye, sir. Hey! Don't drop that on the deck! Are you listening to me? <sighs> it must not feel great only ever getting tails, I bet. Nah, I don't really mind that much. It's way too late for me to start letting that bother me. Yeah, but wouldn't it be nice to get heads at least once? Hell, I know I'd like to see that, and I bet Laffy said here does too. Yeah, I do. Right? That's why I've brought something a little special. Ta-da! What's so special about that coin? It looks identical to the one Eisen already has. The front side does, yes. But both sides of the coin are actually heads. I had Kurogane make it for me custom. If both sides are heads, then not even the Reaper's curse can stop it. Well, yeah, but that's cheating. What's the point in getting heads if it's rigged that way? It's not cheating. It's called effort and hard work. How? If you always work hard and never give up, you'll make your own way forward. All right, I'm in. I'll get that heads for you. What? That crow just flew off with the coin! Those birds are attracted to shiny objects, I suppose. Damn it! I can't even win against a crow! Don't sweat it! I figured something like this might happen, so I had a backup ready. Go on, give it a shot. You'll show that curse who's boss this time. All right, here goes. I don't believe it! Now Prince Percival's griffin's gone and eaten the other coin right out of the air! Are you kidding me? Not to worry. I've got a spare backup. It's time to put that curse on notice. Right. Here I go. You gotta be kidding me! Reaper's curse or not, does it really have to go this far over a damn coin? It's fine, really. I had a feeling it'd turn out like this. Well, I sure didn't. Yeah, me neither.
Hmm? The boss has given me a message for you. Says there's some sort of nasty demon running around in the Aldina Plains, to the east of Logris. She thought it might be the one you're looking for. Wasn't the Eastern Highway closed off from Logris? That was only temporary. It's back open now. If you follow the road, you'll reach Stonebury Village. There you'll find one of ours who actually saw the demon. You want to know more? That'd be a good place to start. Got it. Hey, that's the same direction I sensed Give the... Tabitha our thanks. Looking more and more like we're on the right track. We ought to go check out that Bloodwing story. Then let's start by going to Stonebury. Hey, Aizen, did I say something wrong back there? No. I just didn't think we needed to give the Bloodwings any information for free. Huh? He means the Earth Pulse points, kid. We're the only ones who know about them. But aren't we on the same side as the Bloodwings? We're not enemies with them. But I wouldn't go so far as to call them our friends, either. That's just how it goes in the underworld. Things can change at the drop of a hat. A poison hat. But how are they supposed to trust us if we don't show them trust in kind? That messenger knew our faces, even though we'd never met. He was here waiting for us, even though we hadn't told anyone where we were going. You're right! We hardly know the first thing about them, and yet they seem to know every move we make. They could easily sell us out if it struck their fancy. They'll work with us as long as we're a useful ally in their resistance against the Abbey. But the more tricks we can keep up our sleeve, the better. We've got each other's back, but only as long as we hold a knife up our sleeve. That's what counts as trust in the Underworld. That sounds terrible, but at least you can trust that Tabitha's cooking will be tasty. <laughs> Can't argue that. Everyone's first time to Stonebury, right? Why was it blocked off? Demons? No, there was a great tornado on the Aldina Plains that swallowed up a whole merchant caravan. Hundreds gone in an instant. The cooling of the climate is causing bouts of odd weather. Thunderstorms, heavy downpours and the like. Correct. The Abbey is keeping a tight guard on traffic through the affected areas. If it's open now, that must mean the tornado is gone. I wonder what sort of place it is. It's quite lovely. In the vast forest to the east, you can find gemstones, and it's teeming with rare plants and insects. The locals trade only as much meat and hides as they need, and they live peaceful, quiet lives. You sure know a lot about this place. It's where the Norman he first fell in love with grew up. Yes! Please don't embarrass me. Though we are apart from each other now, our hearts are still as one. Immediately after you and I made our pact and set off, she fell in love with some macho Norman and moved away. What? Why haven't I heard about this? How long have you known? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I found out during my long search for you. Or maybe it was right after we left. I remember leaving something in the village and going back to... Oh well, not like it matters. It does matter! There's no sense in crying over a fickle girl. Come, Stonebury awaits. Be sure to stay with me.
still get overconfident. <laughs> on them in a way that feels right. That's good. Hopefully you won't faint anymore. Yeah, and I'll keep learning too. I hope we can make this work out. Yeah, definitely. Fingers crossed. <sighs> What's wrong? Nothing. Hey! When you and Eleanor made your pact together, she gave you a true name, right? Was it a good one? Uh... True name? What's that? It's a special name in the ancient tongue given to a Moloch as a necessary step in forming a pact with a human. I gave Bienfu the name Fushi Cass. It means thing. <laughs> That's pretty messed up. It's just my own little way of showing affection. So what kind of name did you get, Lafayette? I... Uh... What's the matter? She didn't give you a really weird name like Mogulu gave Bienfu, did she? If you're not happy with it, I can talk to Eleanor about it later. So go on and tell me- I'm fine with it. And I can't tell you anyway. Well, you don't have to get so worked up about it. A true name is not something a Moloch just casually divulges to others. They carry a special meaning to us. Speaking it to anyone other than our Pact Keeper carries a special meaning. Between comrades, it means we trust them with our lives. In other cases, it's... Practically a confession of love! You could have said something sooner, you know. Laffy sets at a delicate age. You should be more careful in the future. Oh, really? It's just another way of showing affection. be the demon Tabitha wanted us to know about. It's flying free, but could it still be a Therian? I just felt an Earth Pulse point. It's that way, somewhere near the top of that mountain. Let's check it out. Yeah. <laughs> 
Scout ship. now. It's up above. Guess we're in for some mountain climbing then. Oh, 
No barrier. I must have gotten it wrong again. I wouldn't be so sure of that. That dragon could well have broken its barrier. Or it might have been too powerful for the Abbey to subdue. You could be right. After all, dragons make for the strongest demons. The problem is, we don't know if it's a Therian or not. Yeah. Let's stick with the plan and head to Stonebury to gather more information. The only one here who thinks the real problem is how we're supposed to fight a frickin' dragon?
Are we ready for this? If I were a Bloodwing, where would I be? We'll start at the inn. It only makes sense. Savid. Well, hello, sailor. <clears throat> Are you waiting for someone? Nope. 
Just saying a prayer for someone. Someone? Let's go. Clearly there aren't any blood wings here. You're just going to leave? I'm right here. Everybody has times they need to be alone. Fee. Right. Coming. What do you think he was praying about? Well, for one thing, he was drinking a bottle of Thorny Forest. Oh my! The drink you share with your special someone when you're going to be married for life! How romantic! But getting your hands on that stuff is no small feat. I can only hope I'll get a chance to taste it someday. That must have had an important meaning for Savid. That's why you left him alone. Don't read too much into it. You're Velvet, right? Huh, you must be the one who's seen the demon we're after. We saw a big snake-looking dragon fly over on the way here. Is that what you saw too? Yes, that's the one. It nests at the top of the mountain in Aldina Plains. We went to look ourselves. No dragon. It only returns to its nest on rainy days. Rainy days, you say? Oh, Just look at what you went and made the weather gods do! This doesn't bode well. Not at all! Thanks. We'll give it another shot. Stoneberry hasn't had much luck growing just yet, but this pioneer town has a lot of potential. Trees grow well here, and the lumber is of great quality. Oh, we're also close to the quarries, so stone isn't a problem. As long as the demons are contained, this country will rebuild. The need for stone and lumber will soar. Best of all, this area is quiet, has beautiful lakes, and is a perfect place for a craftsman like me to work. And why settle for anything less? I do feel that you might be a bit short-handed here. It's hard to build without manpower. You're right. We need something to attract new settlers. Maybe some sort of specialty item? Is there any fruit or vegetable that can only be found around here? There is a type of potato called the radish bell that we grow, but it's got a few, uh, <laughs> quirks. If you want to attract people, you should just ring a bell. Come to Stonebury, where the money grows on trees. Hmm. A bell tower, huh? That might actually work. We can even use local stones for the bell. The Stonebury Stone Belfry. It won't work. Huh? Try hitting a rock. Doesn't ring. Ah, oh, how could I have missed that? I'm still such a novice. My master taught me better than this. Think before you build. That's what he always said. I need to do better and not sully his name. Save it, cats. All the better, meow. I've just stumbled upon a perfectly nifty piece of stone just for you. What's it for? Oh, that's not a geoboard, is it? 
Bingo! I dug it out of some ruins, Meow. They were made by Norman Meowney years ago for surfing along Earth pulses, but I can't use it, so I figured I'd pawn it off on someone else who could, Meow. Wait, Norman made this? That doesn't exactly inspire confidence. Don't be so mean! We're capable of exceptional things! Sometimes, when a Norman speaks their own name, the board springs to life! And whisks its masters away at top speed! They'll even plow right through weak demons! You can say it's our masterwork, even if we sort of stumbled on it by accident. Huh. Well, then I apologize. So we can ride this as long as we have Bianfu with us, right? Well, kind of. Do you have to use your true name to activate it? Yeah, my true name, no. My Norman name. Wouldn't that just be Bienfu? No. Norman have a separate name that goes something like Norman so-and-so. It's almost more a title than a name. Often the name has something to do with what they're good at. Something like Attack, or Chain, or Aqua. Right. You could say names like Bienfu and Grimoire are more like stage names. I actually don't know Bienfu's Norman name, but I can't wait to find out. What is your name, Bienfu? <laughs> Come on out with it. We're in a hurry. Norman Brave. Whoa, look at that! Wait, Bienfu. <laughs> your Norman name is Brave? Absurd! Why do you think I've never told you before, <laughs> At least the board works, Meow. And if we get on this board, it'll move us around? Well, about that. The board propels itself by pushing against Earth Pulse flows. To do that, the board needs information on the flows. But this one here's a completely blank slate, Meow. First, you need to find the geo trees in each area. They serve as a conduit between the surface land and the earth pulses, Meow. Once you've actually located a geo tree, you can record that area's earth pulse data into your geo board, Meow. Got it. This area's geo tree is right over there, Meow. All right then. So long as we find more geo trees, we'll be able to use the geo board to travel much more quickly. Well, that's going to come in handy. Yeah, and it's a lot of fun to ride, too. I can get used to this. <sighs> I'm so worn out. I feel like I had to sprint the whole way here. Huh. It seems like operating the board saps a lot of energy from Bienfu. Even still, this board gives us a strategic advantage. Brave here will just have to bear a little exertion now and then. Yeah, Brave. Buck up. I believe in you. Be brave. Ah! Stop calling me that!